Okay, so I have come across a very relevant quote if i can put it that way just as a sort of motivation for all of you guys out there that are going to be writing your exams so i'm just going to read it out for you um now so it reads as follows the secret of your success is determined by your hard work and strong focus on your goal and i think that just sums everything and brings everything together so i want you to think about it um it's just really um, encouraging you to stay focused. Know what it is you came to come do here. Focus on your goal because we do have an ultimate goal. We don't, we're not planning to stay in college forever, right? We have an ultimate goal that we are working towards. So stay focused on that goal. Work towards it. Put the little work that you have to in order to achieve that goal. So yes, it's not always going to be easy, but always remind yourself of why you started. Give your best at all times and always believe in yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Candelin Khaus. I am a social worker by profession. Currently I'm a call center counselor at the Booming Omsa Call Center. So today I'm going to be answering some of your exam related questions such as exam anxiety, how to cope and so forth. Okay, so the first question is, asking for help makes me feel stupid. How do I overcome this? So I would say you need to do away with that thinking altogether. Because as people, we never stop learning. And sometimes you're not gonna get something the first time that it was said. So maybe you need like um, someone that's gonna explain it a little bit further for you. So um, if maybe you're shy to ask in front of the class, you can approach your teacher or your lecturer in this, um, in this case to explain things a little bit further um, or like maybe the part that you feel like you need uh, more clarity on. If maybe you are scared of your lecturer, get someone in the class that you know is familiar with the topic, is familiar with the with what you are covering at the moment. You know, asking for help is it's 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 difficult sometimes, but it is important, especially when you are in college, um, because as I said, you're not always going to get things the first time around, and that's okay because as people we are different. Okay, so our following question reads as follows. What is exam anxiety and how do I cope with it, right? So this is a two-part question. I'll be answering the first part of the question before moving on to the second part of the question. So exam anxiety. We all know what an exam is, right? Um, so I'll be focusing on the anxiety, right? So anxiety is a feeling. It's a combination of feelings. So while some people would explain it as overwhelming nervousness, other people will explain it as doubt, other people will explain it as fear, you know, that is all anxiety, you know, and usually it's attached to uncertainty. So it's that uncertainty that you have about the upcoming exam, you know, because you don't know, am I fully prepared? Um, am I ready? Did I prepare enough? Did I read enough? You know, it's all that, um, doubt and questions that you have regarding the exam that then creates this whole anxiety about this uncertainty of how is everything going to pan out. So in a nutshell, that is exam anxiety, right? So how are you, are you going to cope with it? The second part of the question. So it's, it's different strokes for every folks, né? but generally, to cope with anxiety, you need to be fully prepared. You need to make sure that you have a structure that you're going to follow. So if, for example, you know that you're a person that study well, studies well in groups, sorry, then you make that happen. If you feel that um, you're more of a person that needs the library, you need the silence and all of that, you create a structure, you create a timetable if you need to. So that you know by, by this time I'm doing this, I'm focusing on this module, for example, and then after that I'm doing A, B and C. Because remember, you need balance in all of this. As much as you're going to be preparing for exams, you also need something that you're going to do when you take a break which is very important by the way. So how are you going to cope? Structure. You know, you need to have structure. You need to be fully prepared for what, and you're trying your best here to fully prepare, right? So however way you're going to feel fully prepared, that is what you need to do to feel, whatever you need to do to feel fully prepared, that's what you need to do. That's what I meant to say. 
Um, also, you need to include some physical activity in between your studying. You know, that's very important. So in between your studying, you, when you take your breaks, um, take a walk. You know, you don't have to do strenuous things because not all of us are athletes, not all of us are into sports, but anything physical. Because remember, like being in an enclosed space all the time, not getting any sunlight because we know sunlight is good for us, vitamin D and all. Um, it, it, it's not good for your mental health as well, you know. And now you need your mind to be clear because you are studying. So if you need to take a walk, um, if you're in the library, Take a walk outside, go get a snack. Remember healthy snacks because my next point is that you need to watch what you eat. So for example, not too much sugar. You want to um, eat a lot of fruits, um, food that's got a lot of energy, good energy because we know sugar gives you that sugar rush more snack. So you want to eat proper food, um, healthy like your fruits. Your fruits have healthy sugar, you know. So I would encourage healthy eating. Rest, guys, rest is very important. You need to get your eight hours in. I know sometimes it's not easy because remember, we all have our le different learning styles. So, for some people, um, they cross night, study whole night. So, if you're gonna do that, make sure that the next day you are not writing. By the way, if you're going to cross night, next day you're not writing so that you can then fit in your your sleep, you know, um, your eight hours. It's very important. I cannot emphasize that enough you need to get your rest so those are just some of the ways that you can um, use to cope with that anxiety um, yeah all right so our following question is how do i concentrate on exams when i'm dealing with personal problems okay this might be very difficult to do especially if you are living at home and um, so for those for example that are living at res it might be easier because now you're living with your peers there's, unless maybe you disagree with um, a roommate and, and all of that, or maybe you don't get along. But why I say it's more difficult for those living at home is that, you know, home is supposed to be your safe space. It's supposed to be where you're free. It's supposed to be where you're comfortable and all that. Yeah? So if the problem is at home, so for example, if I'm just making examples, if there's fighting, um, there's no peace, there's tension at home, it's it's a whole other conversation that we're having and my initial response to this question was you need to address the problem but now i also realize that that is not often an easy thing to do so for example it's not easy for all of us to be like to our parents okay sit them down okay you are disrupting me now you know uh, what's happening at home is disrupting my uh, studying my routine and whatsoever it's not always easy to talk to our parents in that way right so then I thought, okay, then let us look at other ways, you know, because um, sometimes in that kind of situation, that is all you can do. Look for alternatives, you know, because maybe the, like, I'm not saying that you can't, that problem will never be addressed at home, eh? but I'm saying that sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes if you don't, because, you know, um, for some of us traditionally, you can't address your elders on your own. So maybe it will be a process. You need to get your uncles involved and so forth you know but now you don't have the time because you need to prepare for your exams so let's look at some of the practical things that you can do you can seek another location where you can get some study time in so some of your community centers you know um, if there's a library at school which there should be a library at school you get your study time in there because i know but okay so it will be difficult for those people for example that study better at night you know but now you have to like push because the situation is different so you have to push and compromise like you what what are you doing you you're seeking other ways now ne? um so now you you're studying seeking other locations so it could be a friend's place it could be the library it could be your community center whatever because you're trying to get as much study time as possible right ask for help um that is also something that's difficult for some of us to do but it, it's very important especially in in that in, in the college environment you know ask for help so if maybe as i said you have a friend that can maybe help if, if you then study remember my point of studying better at night if you then someone that studies better at night and you need to crash at a friend's place ask that friend you know I, i'm having this kind of problem um of course if you trust the friend because you don't want your your issues to be out there so if you trust your friend ask I, i'm having this kind of problem at home i study better at night can i i utilize your space for for the night you know also 
self-motivation. Um, encourage, remind yourself why you started. Remind yourself what is it? What is it that you're coming to do here? What is your ultimate goal? You know that that really helps you get through those those trying times. Also, um, a very important point that I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with is counseling. Seek counseling. It will help you. Just um, it's 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 nice to to talk to somebody that doesn't know you. Um, I know that sometimes it's easier for people to talk to people that they, that, they, that they don't know, you know, and open up about what's going on so that you don't carry that burden on your own. Because remember, you're facing all of this, but also you have to study, you know, so just to offload and for you not to be constantly thinking about what you are going through, I would say one of the other pointers or my closing point would be seeking counseling. So our following question reads as follows. Do I need to cut off my friends slash social life during exam season? So it's a yes and no answer. Why do I say so? Yes, if you your, your group, in your group, you all do not have the same goals. Um, because we do know most the people that are around us. We do know the kind of friends that we have. Né? We do know how that the next person learns, learns differently than the other person, you know. So don't compare yourself. Um, so the following question is, how do I deal with my family's disappointment if I don't do well? So I have one point to answer on this question is address the expectations. This is very important. Your family needs to understand the kind of change of environment that you are experiencing. It's no more high school, it's now tertiary education. You know, you are being lectured, you know, you're not being spoon fed as in high school and primary. It's a whole different environment and that is something they need to understand. Um, so sometimes it it's difficult to transition. Sometimes the transition is more difficult for, for other people than others, right? If you um, have to do that comparison. But that's okay. It doesn't mean that you won't excel, you know? Yes, if you're struggling with a few modules, that is something that you need to express about your immodulity. It's, it's, it's difficult and I'm experiencing this kind of difficulty. I know I'm supposed to be doing well. I personally experienced this in in my uh, journey in, in varsity. I got to varsity and my mom, all she could ask me is, how many distinctions do you have? After every semester, how many distinctions do you have? And I'm like, does she know what I'm going through, you know? So um, address those expectations. It's, it's really because it, it puts so much pressure on yourself. Um, and I feel like they need to really know what you are going through, the transition, um, the transitioning from high school to tertiary. Because if they at least um, are aware, you know, because they, sometimes they're not aware, they're not aware of what is it that you are going through, what is it that you're experiencing, you know. So just make them aware about it's, it's a whole other environment. I'm still adapting, I'm still learning, you know. And yeah, that, that is what I'd suggest. Okay, so our next question is, when is the best time to study, night or day? So I think I did mention this in one of the previous answers of how we all got different learning styles and preference. So literally my point um, in my little notes that I made was, this is subjective, each to his own. You know, so if you are a person, it's just about remember when I pointed out that you need rest. So if you're going to study during the night, remember you're resting during the day and vice versa, you know. So it's really each to his own. It's about what works for you. You know, um, we no one can decide that for you. It's something very personal and something that you will know for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's what what works for you, basically. So one thing that, uh, one last thing that I wanted to mention to everybody or to promote or to emphasize or to remind you of, remember in the beginning I did say I am working at the BI call center as a counselor. So there are four amazing counselors, um, including me at the call center. We do counseling telephonically. So you can just call us. Uh, our toll-free number is 0800-555-558. So it's either if you want to talk in the moment, you can. If you want to book an appointment, you can schedule that uh, day and time that is suitable for you. Um, it depends on uh, on our schedules as well. So if you want to talk in the moment and there's someone that's available to talk to you in the moment, that can happen. Or either if you want to schedule, then that's also okay.
So give us a call.